Um, so I'm going to talk about a study that I did with some colleagues in Mexico. And um, the reason why we picked Mexico to begin with this study was because they had experience with this type of research and they'd done evaluation of animal welfare education programs over there. Um, but the idea with this is to take it to the next level and do a more international study. And this is just really a pilot. It's a very small study with a, not a very big sample size at all. So the background to this, um, why study attitudes to farm animals? I'm, I'm pretty sure that I don't have to convince most of you why it's important to look at attitudes to farm animals and why we have to look at um, educating people about farm animals and farm animal welfare. So. Um, the initial idea of well, why I started looking at this was because of the importance of consumers and their attitudes to animals. And when they go to the supermarket to buy products, including myself, um, their attitudes to the animals may have an influence um, on what they're going to buy. So um, empathy and attitudes will have an influence on behavior. Um, and people Generally, there's been studies and they've shown that people like animals. The problem is, though, of course, do attitudes always result in behavior? And there are studies that show that people say that they like animals and they care about animals and they think animal welfare is important, but their behavior doesn't always show when they go to supermarket and buy food. But still, I think we can all agree that if somebody has a more positive attitude, once they go to the supermarket, they are more likely to go and buy more animal welfare friendly products. Um, then why look at children? Well, you have to start early to start educating children about animals so that when they grow up, they can become, um, you know, um, how would you say, more considerate consumers. And the more they will know about animals and the more they will know about animal welfare, the more likely they are to make informed choices in the future and hopefully improve the welfare of animals. <coughs> um, the last point is also that um, attitudes seem to have an influence on how people learn. So research on, uh, for example, teaching sciences and teaching maths show that children who have positive attitude to maths are better at learning maths. So perhaps this will have also an influence on how they will learn about animal welfare or generally about animals or farm animals. Um, there's been a, a few presentations on this, including Stephen's presentation yesterday, that shows the importance um, of the different components of attitudes. Um, for example, empathy and knowledge, they're all related to attitudes and to behavior. Um, and it's a very complex measure. I think even myself, I've been working on it for a few years. I don't quite know what to call an attitude measure. What, is, it just an, is it really an attitude measure or just an opinion measure and so on? Um, there's been most of research on attitudes to farm animals um, has been carried out on adults because it's easier and most people would think it's more reliable. Um, and a lot of it has been carried out on industry, uh, people who work with animals in industry, um, farmers, producers, etc. And there's been uh, quite a lot of research on consumers' attitudes as well. Um, and there was a presentation, very interesting one on this yesterday on what you know, what kind of attitude are you looking at? Are you looking at attitudes to farm animal welfare? Are you looking at attitudes to, to just welfare, to farm animals? There's lots of different ways of looking at it. Um, and there's been a lot of research on the attitudes to pets and wildlife, but there's very f little that I am aware of on children's attitudes to farm animals. There's um, been one study published this year and it was part of the evaluation of a farm animal welfare education program. And they looked at chicken welfare education on teenage children. And um, because when you teach um, about anything, and especially if you want to teach about welfare, what you want is a change in attitude so that it results a change in behavior, not just a change in knowledge. Stephen talked about this as well yesterday. and. Um, this is what they did in this study. They looked at this chicken welfare education program, which was, I think, about a year long. And they wanted to see not only if they learned about it, but also if they changed their attitudes. And they used a very clever way of measuring attitude change, um, which I think is not a very standard one. They, they looked at things, the questions were like, you know, if the chicken, or what would you save if the house was on fire, and so on, which is um, a very smart way of looking at it. But they didn't find 
that there was a change in attitude after their study. And there could be two reasons, or two main reasons. Either there was no change in attitudes, or what they used was not the right measure. And there was a change in attitudes, it just it didn't come up that way. So for this study, the idea was, um, it was part of a larger study where we looked at the evaluation of a farm, of a farm animal education program. So it's not farm animal welfare education, it was just teaching them about farm animals. A very short um, program that lasted two weeks only. And I th we thought of developing a very simple attitude scale because maybe sometimes with simple things you can measure things better or you can see changes more easily. And, um, and because there's not been, I, I'm not really aware of anything on farm animals in primary school children, that was the target. And the sooner you start to teach and evaluate attitudes, the better it is. So the participants were 60 children. Um, they belonged to two different classrooms, and each classroom had children aging between eight and nine, because that's the way it was. And it was in a semi-rural town in Mexico, so the kids knew about farm animals and they interacted with farm animals, most of them regularly, or at least, yeah, once in a while. And so they knew about the animals and there was about half girls and half boys. Um, the way that we developed the questionnaire was to check for its reliability by doing a test retest um, method. So we gave the questionnaire to the kids and then we gave it again two weeks later. And these were kids who were in the, as I said, it was part of a bigger study and they were in the control group, so they didn't get any intervention. They got the questionnaire, nothing happened, and then two weeks later they got the questionnaire again, um, just to check that they would answer the same thing twice, that, so that the thing was measuring what we wanted it to measure. And they were just given the questionnaire in the classroom, they would fill it out, and we were there to answer the questions if they had any. Um, the questionnaire was made up of 15 questions, and there was one question where they could answer anything they wanted, and they, we asked them, you know, what is your favorite animal? Then there was another question where they had to pick between four animals, which one they liked the most, so chicken, cows, sheep, and pigs. And then there was another question where we asked them, which one do you like the least out of these four? Same four. And there were 12 questions that were measured on a, like, a scale with these options. And of these, there were two items on chickens, cows, sheep, and pigs and uh, four items in general animals and these were selected because the education program that this was part of um, was on chicken, pigs and cows. Um, so it, as I said it's a small sample it's you know it's not how you usually would create an attitude questionnaire you'd have much larger samples but in this case because we could test and retest the children um, we, we could test the reliability that way. So we looked at correlations um, in each child's answer at the first time point and the second time point. And we found that 11 out of the 12 items were correlated at time, two time points. So the kids were answering reliably. These are the questions. So you can have an idea. So it's really simple questions. Really, really simple. And um, the correlations, oops. Maybe you can't hear me. <laughs> Some of one of them was not significant. So sheep are cute. They just didn't seem to like that question. They maybe didn't make sense to them. And, and by the way, these were all in Spanish. Obviously, this is an English translation now. Um, and the ones that have the highest correlation are pigs are nice and pigs are boring. So they have very strong opinions <laughs> about pigs, or at least they know what they think about pigs. So so it looks like the questionnaire is reliable. So um, we decided to make a, a create a scale. So we, of course, there were positive and negative questions. We reverse coded them, um, summed them up, divided, and got a, um, a score between one and five, with five being a more positive attitude and one a less positive one. Then um, there were also those three questions that I talked to you about, which were not um, calculated on the like scale. So um, to check how the children were answering, I used a different method. And I looked at the percentage of children who gave the same answer the first and the second time point. And when I asked them, what is your favorite animal, which was a free answer, 69% gave the same answer, which is, I think, very good, considering they could answer anything they wanted. So within two weeks, they still liked the same animal. <laughs> um, the one where they had first choice between four animals, that was not so good. Only 60% answered the same thing. And the one that they liked the least, again, they were quite good, 68% answered the same thing at the two time points. 
Um, the average score um, for the attitude scale was of three, so really average. They neither positive or negative, which I think is a good thing because then if you're doing an intervention and you want to see if there's a change, hopefully there should be more of a, of a shift, either up or down. And uh, it was exactly the same for boys and girls, which is great also, I guess. <laughs> now, um, I thought this was interesting just to look at what the children answer. So T1 is 10.1 and T2 is 10.2. And when I asked them, what's your favorite animal? Um, most of them replied it was the dog which is um, really, I, I, I didn't expect the dog to be such a generally liked animal, which is great. Um, and cats, also quite standard. And there's few farm animals and few other animals. And here there's um, details of what the other animals were. And um, so dogs, girls and boys, about the same number like dogs. And cats, girls seem to prefer cats than boys, whereas boys report other animals like Puma, bull, snake, and yeah. So the girls are in blue, which is a little different from usual. <laughs> and the boys are in yellow. And the girls report animals like dolphins and horses and giraffes and so on. Um, as I said, there was one question where they had to pick which animal they preferred between sheep, pigs, and um, cows and chicken. And they seem to all really like sheep not so much pigs, a little bit cows and chickens, whereas the one that they liked least clearly was the pig. And um, I'd be really interested to do this in other countries to see if the same comes out, because I'm guessing in the UK, and I talked to colleagues who said they probably would really like pigs here because of Peppa Pig on television. So, but I don't know, so that would be really interesting to do. But also the other thing that it shows is that they probably need a lot of education on pigs just so they learn more about the animals um, and also because the pig is such a common meat that people eat, so I think it would be good to have a better, a more positive attitude to them. So the this, this scale seems to be reliable, at least the children will answer um, reliably to different time points. It's a very simple measure, so it can be used um, very easily. It's very easy to distribute, they fill it out really quickly, they understand it really easily. Um, but it just needs to be tested on a larger sample and, you know, to to carry out things like um, factor analysis and to make sure the different components, how it comes out and so on. And it needs to be done in more countries to make sure that it works in other places. Um, ah, yes, so I don't know if this scale will actually be sensitive to small changes because as I said, it was part of an evaluation um, of, um, of a education program on farm animals. And I did check between which the results I'm not presenting here, but I'm just going to mention that I compared the results um, with the children who had the intervention, which was a two week intervention. The teacher would teach them about these different animals um, on three different sessions. And there was no difference in the scale, um, but maybe the, the intervention was too short, but there was a significant difference in the favorite animals that they reported as a free answer. So that gives me a clue that maybe giving forced choice is not the best way to measure changes and that might be part of the problem but hopefully I'll present that at some other conference <laughs> later on so um, in the future I think this type of um, attitude questionnaire would be useful in intervention studies to see what how well they work um, if we can find a good measure for this that is sensitive to changes um, it'd be really good to do a cross-cultural study um, and on a largest sample to develop a more accurate scale. And uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. <laughs>